don't think we have to go back that far. Um, but the first thing that we should always look for when we factor is a GCF. Do all my terms have something in common? If they do, I want to go ahead and take that out. And then after you do that, you want to see if you can factor what's left. So let's look at number two there on your uh, worksheets. We've got 3n cubed plus 27n squared plus 42n. Well, our learning target said we're factoring quadratic expressions. This is not a quadratic because it's n cubed. That's a cubic function. However, we can factor this because all three of these terms have an n. So if we take that n out, then it's going to be, become that quadratic that we know how to factor. So, not only do they have an n, they also all are a factor of 3. So we're going to factor out a 3n. Now this helps some people. Some people don't have to do this, but factoring out a GCF is like dividing by what you say the GCF is. So this kind of helps people decide what goes back into my parentheses. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. n cubed over n is n squared. Remember when you divide, you subtract exponents. 27 divided by 3 is 9. And n squared over n is n. 42 divided by 3 is 14. <clears throat> and n over n cancels. Now we can factor that trinomial. Uh, let's see here. The last sign is positive, so we have the same signs. The first sign is positive, so that means they're both positive. 7 times 2 is 14. 7 plus 2 is 9. I think I mentioned this yesterday. Please, please, please do not think that you have to factor at 100 miles an hour like I do. I've been doing it for a really, really long time. I understand it takes y'all some time. Um, but the better you know your multiplication tables, the quicker they're going to go, I promise. So for some of you, that, that's the issue. It's the multiplication, not necessarily the factoring. Okay? So let's do a few just like that. The leading coefficient A is not the GCF. Now, I've showed most of you kind of the way that I prefer to do it and the more mathematically correct way to do it. But there is a trick, and some of you may have seen this before, but it's called slip, divide, and slot. Now, personally, I don't like it because I have to depend more on my calculator, but it, it does make the factoring a little bit easier, okay? So what you do, uh, if we've got something like number 7, 3b squared plus 28b minus 55, uh, I'm debating on whether I want to show you the other way first. Let me, show you the, let me show you the way that I would do it first, and then I'll show you the slip, divide, and slot. Okay, so uh, the way that I would do it, and, and this applies to any factoring problem, guys. Okay, the way I look at it is, okay, what two things do I multiply together to get that first term? For 3, you only have one choice. It's 3 and 1, so it's 3b times b is what's going to give me 3b squared. Then I've got to figure out what multiplies to give me 55 and asks to give me 28, but one of those numbers is going to get multiplied by 3. So when I look at 55, I think 5 and 11. Uh, and by glancing at it, the 11 needs to go here and the 5 needs to go here. Because when I multiply my outside, I'm going to get 33B. When I multiply the inside, I'm going to get 5B. I've got to get positive 28, so I need positive 33 and negative 5. So there are my signs. Personally, I think that's quicker. I like it better. It's more mathematically sound. But you can use this technique, and it always works. What you do is the slip is you take the first coefficient, and you're going to multiply it. You're going to slip it to the end, and you're going to multiply. So our problem then becomes b squared plus 28b minus, I think that's 165, but let me check, 3 times 55. And it is negative. So negative 165. So what I've done is I have eliminated having a coefficient other than 1 in front of my problem. So now it's b times b gives me b squared. And this is what I don't like. It usually gives you a big number on the end. So 
I don't know about you, but other than five, I don't know what else is a factor of 165. So that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to start with five. I lucked out because five times 33 is 165, and five and 33, if one of them is positive, if 33 is positive and five is negative, that's going to give me the 28. So that's the slip part. Then you factor. Now you divide. You divide by that original leading coefficient. So the original coefficient was 3. I'm going to divide. If it divides evenly, I go ahead and divide it out. 33 divided by 3 is 11. If it does not divide evenly, aka 5 over 3, if it reduces, you reduce it, and then you slide that number on the bottom to the front of that factor. And we got the exact same answer. Okay? So, I prefer the purple, but I have a feeling some of you will really like this because you don't have to worry about the, okay, well, this one's going to be multiplied by the three and how do they interact kind of thing. Okay? So this always works. You just have to rely on your calculator a little bit more to figure out the factors. Okay? Do I need to try to run through that again? Okay. Slip. First coefficient slips to the end, you multiply. You factor, then you divide by that original leading coefficient. If it divides evenly, you go ahead and do that. If it reduces, go ahead and reduce it. And then if it still has a denominator, you slide that to the front of that factor, only that factor. Okay? So, whichever, whichever way you feel more comfortable, whichever way you'd rather do it, I'm fine with it. Dead giveaways on number 13 that there is a GCF. Number one, it starts with x to the fourth. We are factoring quadratics. That means they are x squared, not x to the fourth. So when you look at all those, they all have at least x squared. Another giveaway is that it's negative 14. Okay, anytime our leading coefficient, that first number is negative, we want to get that out of the way. Now the question is, is 14 the GCF or is it one of the factors of 14? So I do need to uh, go ahead and divide my, uh, excuse me, other numbers by negative 14. Uh, no, 14 is not our GCF because 146 is not evenly divisible by 14. So then I go to the next biggest factor of 14, which is 7. That doesn't work either. So then our only other option is 2. They are all divisible by 2. So that means our GCF is going to be negative 2x squared. And again, it may be helpful to you to go through and write this under all your terms. It gives some people a better visualization. Okay, so negative 14 divided by negative 2 is positive 7. x to the 4th over x squared is x squared. So what is that? Negative 7 is 4. x. 73. Come on, basic math. And that would be 132 on the end. Negative 132. Okay, so this one's kind of big. Okay. But one of the advantages is that even though our leading coefficient is not 1, it is prime. So that does kind of cut down on our options as far as, you know, what times what gives us 7x squared. We only have one option. 7x times x gives us 7x squared. Now we're going to think about factors of 132. I don't know about you, but I don't really have those off the top of my head. I do know that it's divisible by 2. And that gives me 66. Mm, 14. Nope, that's not going to work. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Is it divisible? It's divisible by 3. Twenty-one and 
four. Nope. And is it visible by four? Yep. Four and thirty-three. Nope, that's not gonna work. Six. Six and twenty-two. Twenty-two and forty-two. Nope. He's taking some time. Not divisible by seven. How about eight? Nope. Not going to be divisible by nine because the digits don't add up to nine. Eleven? Oh, no. Eleven and twelve. So, let's see here. Which way do we need to put these in here? Maybe seven times twelve is 84. Yep, 7 times 12 is 84. So negative 84 plus 11 gives us negative 73. How into the world? <clears throat> but that is how that one factors. Okay, so always, 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 always look for a GCF first. That's why I put some more of these on here because people tend to forget about that. Um, that's always going to make your life a little bit easier. <laughs> Obviously not a whole lot easier because this one still took some time, uh, but it's always going to make your life a little bit easier if you can get a GCF out of the way.